Okay, welcome back again. We're sliding into our third quarter hour here, introducing you to SketchUp. Uh, and at this point, we're going to just go ba basically back to some of the drafting stuff. So I'm going to zoom out here. Your typical zoom tools, zoom extenses here, they don't always work. Um, but I'm going to point out right away what the view command is in this program. So it's not necessarily where you would think. It's not view so much as it's animation add scene. So we're going to go ahead and kind of get to some spot that we think we like. And we're going to hit view animation add scene. So the view, and we'll just create a scene from that. That means later on when we zoom in here, right, I can zoom in a little bit closer. And I can do the same, view, animation, add scene, create a scene. That means I can jump from one to the other. Zoom out, see that little bit of a pan there, and I can zoom to the other one as well. And if you notice that transition that we said early back in the first video that we had done is kind of wearing on us now. So we can go back now to window, model info, animation and then going ahead set scene delay and we'll go with a really short one I will just change that later so all right so how do you draft here are my suggestions I'm gonna go to camera standard views top I'm sorry ISO in perspective I'm going to turn things around here remember red is positive X green is positive Y and Z is positive blue don't forget that you want to immediately draft a box someplace off to the side. P for push, push it up, select it all, right click, make a group, and then push that off to the side. That would be my first suggestion. This program can get out of whack unless you, when you're doing planar drafting, unless you kind of make positive steps to stay on the same plane. So I do that positive step by actually drafting something larger, kind of like an AutoCAD, than the thing I want to draft, which means later on, if I, if I hover my mouse, it'll grab down to that face. I'll show you what I mean right here. I'm going to grab a line, and if I just go out here, right, I don't really know where it's going. So when I turn around like this, it actually did stay in the plane, but sometimes it will get out of whack. So. Uh, this ability to lock down to plane, I'm sure there are rubies out that will do that, but you'll see that ability by just kind of hovering it near a face. So for instance, particularly on this one here, um, you see which is a kind of a scribble, I guess you call that. If I go here and I'm holding down my mouse, if I were to do that, not in this program, but not on top of a face, I would get all kinds of different things. And you might see there, I might have actually not had it work. So if I look right there, it kind of looks like, I guess it did, kind of looks like it actually cut it out and did my cutout. And I'll point out here the difference between an edge, that is, dividing up two faces or an edge which is just floating in space is how thick the edge is typically. So that's not the case I'm erasing here. But right now, as I've done that, it should have divided up that face into two things. And it kind of looks like it did. But if I go here, sometimes it does. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm clicking, right-clicking, racing, And you see it kind of did. So that fact that I had two different edges um, which means now I could P for push this one and I could have something that you know I could work with. I'm going to go edit undo here, push pull, and I'm going to do edit undo erase. So I've got that set of edges there. So that's one way. Another thing, important thing I'm going to let you know is that you can, should learn to use the off tool, offset tool, but more important on this program is to do a copy parallel. So I'm going to just go ahead and do some wall offsets here. So I'll go ahead and you right click and erase that. I'm going to right click, right click and erase that. What I'm going to do now is learn to grab just an edge. Use the control key in the move. And as I do that with the control, hopefully it will stay on the plane if I get close to that plane and I can then key in how far I want to go. So I'm going to go in this case 400 
you see it jumped up that time. So I'm going to come back and do edit, undo, copy. I'll try it again. I grab, hit the control key. In this case, I'm going along that axis. You see it's on face. I'm going to type 400. And it, in fact, keeps on jumping. I guess it looks like it's jumping on me, but it's not. And it actually is. So that doesn't always seem to work. It's an odd, I think that's just the perspective. So what I'm going to do now is, if it starts acting like that, very often you go and change your camera to a parallel projection. And probably still not quite correct, but we'll try that again one more time. I'm going to go ahead and erase. And now you start to see why people get upset with this program. So sometimes you want to go ahead and erase and get rid of the face and then view turn off the axes and you can see your work a little bit better and as you do lines they should grab and grab another face so I'm gonna go ahead and grab here using the control key clicking there and I'm gonna move along with the control key on 400 on the edge that's good and if I wanted now to go three times it would remember that so that concept of an array is there as well. I'll do the same thing here. And you'll notice immediately it cut this edge up. I'm going to go ahead, click, hold the control key, go here. I'm going to go, you see it tends to remember the last thing I did. I'm going to left click and I'm going to say three times. So this concept, you'll see that it all of a sudden doesn't start breaking up these edges. So right there I've got something that immediately will have the ability to make a face of. We'll see whether it has one in there already. It does not. So what you very often will then do is just draft right on top and you'll see sometimes it will fill in one. I'm right clicking, erasing, and I'll have something I can push up as I need be. So that ability to use copy parallel is becomes incredibly important, especially as you start going to different planes. Let's say I was laying in not a window from the component manager which I'll cover in a couple of minutes but just the kind of base window here we can do it along our next plane by grabbing and left clicking holding the control key holding that and I'm moving up with the control key remember that control key I'm going to go ahead and move it up this time 200 that didn't take try it again control key you want to click first and then type 200 I think that will do it for you. Do the same thing here. I'm going to left click, use the control key, and I'm left clicking again. I'm left clicking using the control key. It's remembering each time. And finally, I'll do the same. Now, you could have done this with the offset command. I'm going to point out on this face, but you do want to get used to doing the offsets by control copy. So I'm grabbing not the face, I'm hitting a space bar, grabbing the select. You learn to hit control key, you're going to take that. And if, if you don't hit the control key, odd things start to happen. Now you have something that you can go back if you want to and erase. Right click erasing, you're selecting. You can just use the erase tool my daughter would use which is uh, I don't see it up there but it's it's an erase right there you can do a lot of that so um, probably much more than I have uh, again a lot of the skills that I'm laying out are made to stay consistent somewhat between AutoCAD and SketchUp that's not necessarily the best way to go that said the offset tool does work you can select something there and bring an offset in so I'm gonna go ahead and offset that 200 feet and you then start to have all this cool push-pull stuff that I won't even begin to say that I understand but different keys like control or alt or shift will do different things with the push-pull so I'm gonna do push-pull here and I'm gonna grab that out where if I do control it'll do something a little bit different and shift might be do something different and there's a, I know one that will actually have it kind of stretch things out a little bit. So um, 
that sense that you have an ability then to draft on any number of faces as you pull faces out. That's the beauty of this thing, though it's sometimes hard to control. So I really suggest that you kind of think about getting your base work done correctly first before you start doing things like that. And if you're going to start adding pieces that are going to be consistent from one thing to the other, you want to get very good at very quickly doing things like grouping them. Taking that, remember, right click, create a group or a component, and then having the ability to use the I'm hitting the control key, shifting over here. I'm going 400, return two times. If you notice there, I got out of whack, added undo. All right, so that was an array. So, all right, let's see what the, we can do with components here. So, one of the great things about SketchUp is that any AutoCAD block that you've made within reason will come over into SketchUp. That's why those of you doing a man animation, you're going to want to make a very a drawing that has just blocks. This transfers over also into Inventor. Just blocks, nothing else, and then do the file import and grab down here to the AutoCAD drawing, DWG, when you see it. All right. However, there is a great set plethora of blocks out there. I'll show you the two places to get them. They're called components in SketchUp. At, you get them at the 3D warehouse or you get them right here in components. There's a lot of examples there and one of the things you really want to get aware of learning to go to in model to see what things are already in the model. But otherwise learning to go out and search around I'll do for my renewable people. I will go out right now and go out and look for a model called a thermal PV panel. You know they got the PV people out there. Oh, let's see, solar home. Uh, well, I didn't find that, but I did find a composting toilet. So most of these things are 3D. I'm going to go ahead and download the model, bring it in. Remember, scale is going to be a big issue later on. So I'm going to go ahead and show you whoever this comes in. Dr. Bob's Pompolona Yurt Getaway. It must be pretty nice. Bob must have a see whether that comes in or not. Looks like it doesn't want to. Let's see whether it came in or not. It Maybe it did right there. It's a little tiny. Oh, look how tiny it is. It's tiny. Tiny. So, or maybe I'm just very large. So one thing you can very nice, by the way, that one. So you can do very quickly in this program is you're going to see within a component learning to use that tool, which is the tape measure tool. You double click on a component that you go ahead and grab the tape measure. And I'm going to go ahead and just measure from that. Not a good idea to that. And I'm going to tell it, boy, that's about right. I wanted that to be one foot. And it's going to resize just that model. And so now that model was sized up probably incorrectly. And I realized I was drafting very large. So you get a little bit of the sense of Lilliputia and how very quickly it's possible to get away. Um, all these things can get away from you. Now with this, if you assume that this model is actually correct, I can go ahead now and take this. I'm going to go ahead and turn the shadows off. That tends to eat a lot of processing power. Click this over. I'm going to move it out of the way. It's not going to let me do it. So. Um, it's going to explode here in a little bit. Models are large. You're going to learn to, learning to manage components uh, so you don't bring in those really intensive components until you're ready and your machine is ready. Um, it's 86 on me right now and that's a good place to end I think. So learn to get out, check your units, um, learn to use offsets, learn how to make a little box on the side to start, learn how to do layers, learn how to make groups early and often and components all the time. Learn how to use the shift key to hold a face and the control key to do a copy. Um, there's a lot more but with that and definitely learn to get the Ruby code editor script and sketchy physics to start. Thanks for listening.